I guess I've probably prepared something, I guess. Um, but anyway, um, we've got to really go back to this thing called motivation, you know. When we're working with this plant, everyone's talking about, oh, how am I going to make so much money? It's a new gold rush, green rush, blah, blah, blah. It's like everyone's thinking about this one thing, bottom line. Are we going to make money? Are we going to make money? Are we going to be cool? I think you probably understand how many of the best weed grower, master growers there are in the weed industry now. We've got like so many 27-year-old master grower. I've been growing for two years. Oh man, I'm fucking killing it. Look at this, man. I have botanic hair. It's fucking so sick, you know? <laughs> Some of us have been doing it a little while longer. Um, you know, you go back to all the industries of organics, you know, really what the main focus of the best people are is how do they do it the best they possibly can? They focus on what the plant needs, what is gonna give the best flavor, what's gonna arise the best conditions naturally. You know? They're not thinking about the bottom line ever. They're thinking about how to produce the best product, how to be the most consistent. So already, even across the board in organics, intention's really the focus when you get to the higher level cultivators. Across the board, in any strawberries, blueberries, grapes, cannabis, you know, all of us kind of, when you get into this certain group, really the heart is kind of where we're all coming from, you know? So really, with an altruistic intention, you know, we really kind of subside our ego and how cool we are and how special we think we are and how our view is right and how we got the best weed and the best strains and the best system that we're trying to make money off of everyone, it seems like everyone. But really, once we start to free ourselves from that and really go into an altruistic intention that can really help bring something that's gonna heal, help bring something free of ourselves and all of our, what we think is special, but let the plant do its thing, you know? So for me, over the years, I've been consulting lots of different growers, lots of different um, styles, up and down the West Coast. Um, lots of different types of people. Some really, really, really cool. Some really, really, really not cool. <laughs> really, really selfish, you know? Tell you whatever you want to hear, man. You know, all, all, all until they take everything they can, screw you over, break all their work, lack all the integrity, you know? But that's life. It happens across the board, not just in our industry, but since money is the main focus of a lot of these people, it really um, comes through when we're starting to do contracts and starting to blow up and everyone's like, oh my God, Wall Street, cannabis, Forbes, blah, the new, everything. But some of us are like, oh, just keep doing our thing. Not blowing up in any type of way, but just trying to keep producing medicine that can help kids heal seizures with epilepsy. And other people with cancers and, you know, take stage four pancreatic, lung, brain, prostate, whatever. And, offer some help to relieve that. And you start to hear all these stories of like, I mean, just phenomenal stories that you never thought you'd be a part of, you know? Because even you can be getting barreled in a wave and like just spit out, it could be so amazing, but you won't ever drop a tear, you know? But someone's like, oh, my, my kid doesn't have seizures anymore because of this medicine you gave, or my wife had a racquetball-sized tumor in her, you know, long and now it's gone and these things will bring that out you know so it's like such a special opportunity we get to be able to offer something to so many people across the board you know like across all types of styles of view and religion and whatever and really start to do something altruistic you know with a power plant that's i mean got this place kind of full it's got the whole world hypnotized right now everyone's like cures cancer, epilepsy, autism, ADHD, blah, 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 you know? It's like, goes on, everything. So maybe it comes down to this endocannabinoid system that we all keep talking about, all the stress reduction, proper balance of hormones. So it's really across the board, really, like when you look at all systems, it's the same as our body. So when we start to create the balance in ourselves start to eliminate our egoism in every way of our self-grasping and creating all this stress so this plant gives us this opportunity to 
have that all in balance. So even our chemistry stays in the middle way. So it's really a something that's been it's been happening for so many thousands of years. The plant's been working with us to evolve our consciousness, and I can go on for days about what I think about power plant, wisdom plants, all the whole thing, because this has been my life for a long time. You know? So the reality is, is it all comes back to this thing called altruism. You know, it really this altruistic intention. You know, so once we can really harness that by, you know, being honest with ourselves. We all know why we're doing everything we're doing. If we're brushing our teeth just because mindlessly or if we're being mindful about it. If we're doing everything we're doing mindfully or if we're just doing it mindlessly. And we're starting to set our base of eliminating all our thought patterns that are just BS, cyclic <coughs> dreams of ignorance that are lack of focus generate in our mind. You know, it's, they're kind of pointless. They're useless. It's a waste of energy versus bringing some focus with some breath practice, some type of meditation to where we can really be free of our egoism, to where we can be altruistic in our action, to where all things around us bloom well, you know, blossom well. Not just our cannabis plants, but our life, our children, every person we come in contact with, you know? So it's like this plant's kind of created a conduit for everyone to be giving be altruistic if they choose, or be an egomaniac and be the best weed grower, master grower, like G, whatever, B-H-O, whatever, you know, like, <laughs> taking IG dabs, the old master, or you can just keep doing your thing, maybe focus a little more, be a little less selfish, you know, and we can take this intention and start doing some really beautiful things with it. I mean, you need to look at Kung Fu Panda, you know? He's like, how does he become the Dragon Warrior? Altruism. So they're selling, I mean, they're selling it in everywhere, you know? It's like, how it goes, you know? So, and you talk to little kids. I mean, all they want to do is help. So when we start to take that and start to create this connectivity, connectivity between all these people, with people you can heal, people you can help, not as us the healer, but just to create a clear medicine that's got an intentional foundation so it can really, really do its thing, you know? Because you've put your part into it, you know? Like, because the reality is, when I eat, still eat my mom's kimchi and like food when I go see her, it's like she makes it, I'm all, oh, I'm coming to see you, mom, oh, okay, yeah, I'm making it all nice. I can't even come close to making it like that. Because I don't love myself like that, you know? She loved me so much. You know, she's my mom. Makes kimchi so good, so perfect, everything. So I'm sure we all have that experience with our grandmother or with our whoever take care of us, you know? So it's like real. We know that thing, what that intention does. It can bring the potential out of anything. Out of ourself, too. Then. Meaning, like, when altruism is the thing, when helping others is the thing, you start to become this, like, nothing, you know, so you can become kind of everything. So reality is, is there's this great teacher, his name is Chogyam Trungpa, and he said this really great thing, you know. If we can all become like a grain of sand, you know, so then we obstruct nothing in the universe. Then we can become one with the universe, because we have no obstructive value. We become in flow with everything. So really it's like that in the room. It's like that with the garden. If you can be free of all your cyclic thought pattern and all your drama that we want to tell ourselves we're important with or whatever, escape from our, what's happening. If we can free ourselves from all that and be present, then focus some altruism of like, oh yeah, this plant really helps people. Do it compassionately to where we can really actually drive that momentum. You know, like, it it's, becomes a really beautiful thing, you know? You become a part of something that's really, really sweet, like a nectar, you know? So, I mean, that's really, for me personally, like, how I deal with the plant, how I deal with helping, how I deal with whatever, you know? So, instead of focusing on all the BS branding and all the illusion, or whatever, just being real, you know? Being honest with yourself, you know? Having some focus, having some training, being diligent, 
Being patient. This is like a hard one, you know? I've been doing this for 20 years. That's why it's easy. It was easy then, because I'm a weirdo. I have OCD. I like do everything like ah, 150% like till I don't sleep and I'm just like crazy, you know? But some people are not, not like that, so. But still we can all like do it from our heart. And that feels good, you know? So I guess that's about all I have to say, so thank you very much.